How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. And by popular request, I'm going to do a quick movie review, quick, maybe not so quick review on Netflix's Chasing Coral. Most people stare up into space with wonder. Yet we have this almost alien world on our own planet just teeming with life. It's a world completely out of sight and out of mind. I have the utmost respect for corals. They're really sophisticated animals. Coral is a fundamental part of a huge ecosystem. They continue living as long as their environment allows them to. There's this big heat wave that's traveling around all over the world. The coral bleaches and what you're seeing is its skeleton underneath. So real quick, Chasing Coral, it's a documentary that was put on Netflix by, make sure I get all the people right, by Exposure Labs, and they were the same folks that did Chasing Ice that documented um, the effect of global climate change on the glaciers in the Arctic. And so they have then moved on now to uh, document the coral bleaching problem that's rampant throughout the world as a result of global climate change. Currently the movie is sporting a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is pretty impressive. And I have to agree, I, I thoroughly am impressed by the movie. I wouldn't say that I enjoyed the movie, and I, I'm guessing that that's never the point of something like this. There are a lot of aspects of this documentary that I just love to death. And there's other parts of this documentary that are just crushing, crushing as a as somebody who loves diving, as somebody who loves reef aquariums and the ocean. Um, seeing what they had, you know, brought to just just bring into your face and, and show you what's going on. Um, it's, for lack of a better word, it's terrible. So first off. I'll, like, I'll go over some of the, the pros, the things I just loved about it. Um, it's visually stunning, and by visually stunning, it's, by my standards, the, the best it's ever been. There was a, a viral video that went or, ran around maybe like a year or two ago called Slow Life, and that was done by a production studio in Australia called, let me make sure I get this correct, BioQuest Studios, which is Pete West and uh, Daniel Stopin. And if you have not seen Slow Life, Go back and check that out. It's it's hands down, in my opinion, actually, it's, I don't even think it's my opinion so much. I think it's hands down the best choral visualization video, period, end of story. Um, you're probably aware I kind of like video production. I kind of like photography. And um, that is the gold standard for choral imagery. And knowing what I know about cameras and photographic technique and videography technique it is unrivaled like I technically possess the equipment to do what they've done would I ever do what they've done no never in a million years it is so difficult to, to capture what they've captured that I have no interest in climbing that mountain and they've done it and it's Visually, it does not get any better. So I'm so glad that this documentary incorporated a lot of visuals from them. The videography in Slow Life has a profound effect on the way that I shoot corals for Tidal Gardens. And so definitely, it's, it's the best. So aside from the BioQuest stuff, their underwater videography um, is, it's miraculous as well and there's a lot of challenges to taking underwater video that they've really worked around making sure the colors are all right and as far as what I've seen with underwater dive video of reefs this is second to none as well if you just wanted to look at it for the eye candy of the reefs alone it's worth a watch so talking a little bit about the narrative style of this documentary it goes back and forth between uh, some exposition and some education on coral biology and climate change and its effect on, on the natural reefs. And it does a very, very good job of 
kind of covering the basis. I mean, I don't think that they're going to tell you, as a reef hobbyist, a whole lot that you didn't already know about corals, but um, they go through a lot of the visualization, a lot of, um, a lot of CGI that kind of illustrates all the different aspects of coral biology and how that's affected by climate. And I think that for somebody who's never seen anything about corals that don't even know that corals are animals, um, I think this documentary does a great job of getting people up to speed very quickly and, and, and familiar with these things. And again, with the visuals, does a great job of making people care. Because this is stunningly beautiful stuff. And I don't need to tell you guys about how stunningly beautiful corals are uh, if, you're, if you're on this channel. They cut in and out of the, the coral biology uh, discussion with the, the film production aspect of it and, and all the trials and tribulations that they ran into as a film crew to try to get this footage because if you've ever been diving everything is an issue. The ocean is extremely challenging to shoot in and to shoot long term trying to capture an event that takes a little bit of time. I mean, it's not just a, turn the camera on, five minutes, you got your shot. It has to be done for days after day after day after day after day to catalog this, this process of coral bleaching and coral death. And they ran into all sorts of issues, and that, that kind of brings a little bit of dramatic tension to the film. Um, some folks may or may not like to, to hear about the, the different technical aspects of it. I personally liked it. Uh, obviously being a little bit of a gearhead, being a little bit of a recreational diver, I can certainly appreciate the effort that they put into that. Uh, but, you know, and, and at times I'm like, you know, titter titter, they're using Panasonic, but again, regardless of that, um, they, that, that's how the, the, the narrative is it's kind of broken up, going from talking about the corals, talking about the production, corals, production, corals, production, and you see uh, how they travel the world looking for areas where they can document this. And finally you get to the climax where they, where they show you the finished product of what they were able to capture. And you see these thriving, not even, I don't know if they're thriving, you see these reefs and as time goes on, and it's not even that much time, this heat wave comes through and it just kills everything. As far as the eye can see, everything is dead. And that is like the most heartbreaking part of this. It's, we, we see corals die in our, in our home aquariums, but to see it die for like hundreds of miles of corals, and they're just gone. Unfortunately, this is a phenomenon that a lot of divers were already aware of. So there are people who have been diving for 30, 40, 50 years, and they remember what the reefs used to look like. And compared to, compared to their memory, what we see today in a reef, it's, it's a sad joke. And that's kind of alarming when you consider that over the course of 30 years, they have seen this decline. But the, the recent decline is what's really... Uh, bringing them to the point of despair, these old scuba guys. Um, there's a, I don't know if you're familiar with this book called Corals of the World. It was done by J.E.N. Viren. He goes by Charlie, John Viren. And he is kind of a, a pioneer in, in coral taxonomy. He was one of the first guys to get out there and start cataloging all these corals in Australia. And they interview him. And he tells this, uh, one, one of the guys in the production, uh, his name is Zach, he was also a coral hobbyist, um, and a very passionate coral hobbyist. He, um, I guess he would represent most closely our perspective watching this. And he's interviewing um, Charlie Viren, and Viren basically says, hey, I, I'm, I'm glad that I am my age, and just have seen the things that I've seen, and not your age to see what's about to come. It's so sad. And um, again, going back to going back to Zach, one of the filmmakers, he said um, that you know, growing up, that he wanted to be Charlie Viren. Like that's like his dream job to go into the reefs and just to catalog all these corals and dive every day. 
And he says one line that was like, it really stuck with me. He just says that, you know, but I was born just too late. And you can kind of look at that two ways. You can say that, oh, I was born too late because Charlie Viren already did this in like the 80s or, or whatever, 80s and 90s. But the other way you can look at it is there's no more coral. It's all dead. We've killed it. And that's also heartbreaking. There's a couple aspects of the documentary that I kind of didn't expect to, to have pop into my head. So at one point, uh, they show the, the wide-scale bleaching of the coral reefs. So like from a from plane, you can practically see all the white corals that aren't doing so well. And uh, part of the narrative, and I, again, this, I think this goes back to the, to the filmmaking component. I'm not really sure if this is exactly sequential. But there was a scene where the corals, in kind of like their last death throes, become extremely vibrant, um, like bright, bright purples, bright, bright greens and yellows. And from a plane, you can just see the reef just glow. And the way that they addressed it in the movie was that, oh, like the white corals became this and then collapsed. And I don't know if if that does happen, that that is very interesting, but I kind of have a feeling that maybe it was it was colorful and then it goes white and then it dies. But to see what just how uh, like fluorescent and just radiant these corals looked and, and just this bright pastel color, it made me think of like essentially an ultra low nutrient system look. And what then follows is just this collapse and take that for whatever you think but that kind of made me sour on the idea of ever trying ultra low nutrient knowing that it is just at this razor's edge of colony collapse so that's one thing that I didn't expect to see at all in in the video and going back to when I dove in Okinawa I saw a lot of coral colonies that were planted by somebody uh, right outside of our of our resort and you know just fields of them and I was remarking just like how amazing their coloration looked and now looking back after seeing this documentary perhaps a lot of that in intense coloration it's not a good thing and kind of you know makes me wonder if any of that stuff is still there anymore it, it might be but again like things move quickly when when you're talking about an ecosystem collapse like that. All right, so that in a nutshell is my thoughts on Chasing Coral. I think it was fantastic. It's brutal in, in many ways. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, and I think it's worth seeing, and I think it's definitely worth having your friends see. So unfortunately, I'm not the most optimistic person in the world when it comes to this sort of thing. But I am curious, for those of you who did see it, what did you take away from the film? And if you feel optimistic about the future of the ocean, tell me why. Tell me why we should feel positive going forward. Okay, that's it from here, and we'll get back to some more regular content. If you want to see a happy movie, go watch Baby Driver. Don't watch this. <laughs> See you guys.